Today we are going to be talking about the best secondary weapons that you can use on Rebirth Island from the fastest statistical TTK to some off meta different kind of builds that you could experiment with too. Let's get into it. And for the first weapon that we will be talking about is the WSP9. Now this is one of my favorite guns to use just the overall feel of the gun and the way this gun shoots is just really fun to kind of just use and just have some fun with it. But it is also statistically one of the best guns in the game right now. Is it the number one gun? Probably not in my opinion just because of the fact that some of the other guns do kill fast faster than it up close, but it does have a good sprint to fire. It does hold that range for a little bit longer than some of the other SMGs, but just overall in general, this is still a very usable build, especially in rank play if you're trying to get sweaty, but usually in the rank play build, we'll talk about some other builds for you guys there. But again, one of the best guns that you can use in pubs, and these are the attachments I would be using on it. I use the light barrel for some movement, the compensator, the DR6 hand stop, and this is where you can kind of get funky with it. You could take off the high grain ammunition if you don't want it. If you look at the high grain ammunition, it takes your effective damage range up to 20 meters, which with submachine guns, 20 meters is pretty far. It's definitely manageable for more of the skillful kind of player and it helps your bullet velocity. But there are also some players that don't really care about the threshold of, you know, 20 meters and 18 meters. That two meter difference might not be enough for you to actually like you kind of justify using this attachment. So there's a world where if you don't like this exact loadout that I've recommended, you could take off the high grain ammunitions and you can use a bunch of different things on it. I would probably recommend using your favorite optic. Mine is usually going to be the Jack glassless optic on most guns that I use just for the firing aim stability. And this is another way for this one to look. This gun has very minimal recoil, and when you shoot it at the bots, you can see very controllable recoil, not a lot of control like very needed, and just in general, you can see that this gun is going to have some decent movement speed, and if you shoot it at the wall, you can see the recoil for an SMG. It goes straight up and has a little bit of horizontal, so overall, a very usable gun when it comes to meta weapons with the WSP9, but that is my two builds I'd recommend for it. Go back to the attachments one last time. You have the glassless optic if you don't really feel the high grain ammunition, and if you like the iron sights, throw on the high grain ammunition or throw on another attachment, and it's going to be shooting like this for you when you use it too. I personally love these iron sights, weirdly enough. Uh, I've been using this gun a lot just kind of in pubs. And yeah, let's move on to the next one. And this next one is going to be the Striker 9. Now, this is the longer range build of the Striker 9. Personally, I love this build. This one is just really, really good overall. You can see on the numbers that I was showing you earlier, the time to kill of this gun is 100% number two in the meta. The HRM9 is probably the only gun that has it beat right now when it comes to SNGs. And we'll talk about the Core 45, which also has a very fast time to kill here in a second. But I do think this is a very usable gun. Probably the number two option, I would say, or maybe the number three, depending on where you put that core when we kind of have a conversation about how that pistol works right now. It's kind of in a weird spot. But yes, these attachments right here make this gun very usable. The iron sights on the striker are fun. The mobility on the striker nine is fun. And this is a longer range build that you can use which is very easy to just kind of hit your shots, control that recoil, and drop your enemies when you need to at most times, and obviously the Rebirth Island ranges. And you have to remember too, when you're playing Rebirth Island, a lot of your gunfights are gonna be anywhere from zero meters, which is gonna be really close in staircases, to I would say about like the 15 meter to 20 meter range with a sub is that threshold of what you want. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, this one up to 14 meters has that very fast time to kill a threshold. So this Striker 9 version is a very good build for it. I recommend trying it out. And uh, here's one other Striker 9 for you. And that other build is going to be this one right here. This is the Frostbite blueprint as well that you get from the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie bundles that we'll talk about in a whole nother video. I'm probably going to do a video just around this build in general just because it's a very fun build as well. We have also made a short form video on this exact build too. So this one's also really, really good. It's going to be suppressed too, which is also something that's in general, a lot of people like to have suppressed weapons so they don't come up on the mini map. A very easy gun to still kind of shoot and control. The tracers are a pretty good addition. And just the way this gun looks, is also just really cool too so if you don't like the first build of those iron sights you can try something like this and if this is just too hard for you to control you can take off the sonic suppressor and add a zem compensator and you're still going to get the same effect just a little bit of easier recoil but just a little bit less range when you're losing that sonic suppressor so overall another good way to build a striker nine is right here on your screen these attachments or the ones i just recommended now let's move on to the good stuff and starting off first with probably the most common loadout i think there's three ways to build the hrm9 right now and honestly i do not know which one i I like the most. We've already hit Iridescent in rank play. I've used the HRM9 a bunch. We used the Renetti a bunch before it got nerfed. Thank God that gun got nerfed. But this is probably my number one recommendation, although I don't know if this is my favorite one. Now, that's a weird thing to say, I know, but just when I'm recommending this gun, I feel like having the high green ammunition on this without having that long barrel is kind of necessary, just because you're going to have the threshold where 13 meters compared to 11 
is going to be a big difference. I know we talked in the WSP9, the 18 to 20 is not that crazy. I think you're going to have a lot more gunfights between the 11 to 13 meter range. So having that really fast TTK in that threshold is probably going to save you a lot more than you think it does. So that's why I think high grain ammunition is definitely necessary on this build. And that's why I took off the thorn barrel that a lot of people use the thorn barrel as well for the sprint speed and the movement, which is definitely understandable. But I just think this one with the high grain is still super controllable and it's going to be able to get that extra two meters of effective damage range, which can definitely be a really, really big factor in a lot of those close range gunfights, especially towards the end game in Rebirth, especially if you're playing ranked. And even if you're not playing ranked and you are playing just regular pubs, I think this gun can save you a lot. So I think this is probably the best build that you can use on it just for the overall just feeling of the HRM9. It aims in fast. It has that movement. But there's two other ways that you can build this. You can take off the high grain and you can just throw on the barrel and this is going to give you more movement speed. You can see that you get some sprint speed, some tactical sprint speed, some better sprint to fire. And I totally understand if that's kind of what you want to use too. I think the high grain is a little bit more necessary than the thorn barrel, but that is just my opinion on it. You could still use this build and absolutely fry you're still going to kill really fast regardless, no matter what build you use. Now, these two HRMs are definitely, you know, what you're going to see most, I would say. And again, that's probably why I would recommend them. And also people tend to like this iron sight a lot. But lately, I have been using this build. And weirdly enough, you would think this one kind of slows you down. But when you use this long barrel, it gives you that effective damage range all the way up to 14 meters, which is a little bit longer than the other one that we were just showing you. It doesn't really hurt your ADS speed at all. And it does hurt your sprint to fire just a little bit. But honestly, I'm kind of willing to take that for the extra range that you get and the bullet velocity makes it even easier sometimes if you're shooting someone like trying to float from the sky or do like a quick rotation and you have your sub out you can actually hit people with this gun from longer ranges and it doesn't hurt your movement speed your tactical sprint speed stays the same even if without the barrel the only way it gets faster is if you use a thorn barrel and i think you just move fast enough anyway without that so i've been using this in solo versus squads and i have absolutely been frying if you guys watch my live stream you will see that i definitely use this when i'm playing solo versus squads and i'm trying to get cracked with it and even obviously at the iridescent rank level too. So I think this is my favorite build. I wouldn't recommend this as my number one option again, just because I think this one's a weird one compared to the other ones. I think those are a little bit more practical, but this one personally just fits my play style the most. And that's a big thing that I'm kind of showing you guys with all these loadouts is even though this one fits my play style and I've just liked these iron sights a little bit more. So it fits personally for me. You're going to see a lot more of the other HRM. So whatever fits your play style is always what you kind of have to cater to too. That's why I'm trying to give you guys multiple builds when it comes to just showing you guys different striker nines and different WSPs and all that stuff. These are more recommendations to kind of start off with and then obviously have your tweaks here and there if you want to use them. So try this one out. Let me know what you guys think. I'll show you guys what it looks like really quick just shooting it. I love the thin iron sight and it's just a really controllable recoil. It has that like time to kill threshold all the way up to 14 meters and you still feel relatively fast when you're obviously in the mix with this gun. So I think this gun's pretty good and if you want to take off anything on this, maybe you take off the DR6 hand stop and you throw on that high green ammunition to have like a lot more range. It would be up to 16 meters, which could be pretty cool, but then you definitely lose some sprint to fire and that's where you're being a little bit too much sprint to fire kind of loss on that. But uh, it still can definitely be possible and usable. Let's see how this shoots, honestly, really quickly. Uh, still controllable, still manageable, but you definitely do strafe a little bit slower and it doesn't feel like your typical SMG anymore. And that's where you're kind of losing me with this one. So overall, I think this one's probably the best or you can try the XRK Edge hand stop as well, whatever you kind of prefer. But regardless, very good build. Probably my number one HRM9 for me personally but again you can kind of pick and choose through those three builds now let's move on to the statistical fastest time to kill gun in warzone right now they say and that is going to be here just when they nerfed the Renetti. they made this gun this gun has still been good it's always been good this was not a buff this was no secret buff or nerf or anything this gun has just always been insane even on the big map in warzone season one i'm pretty sure i made a video about this on christmas day if i remember correctly i dropped this video and this gun's still insane now the one thing that's different between this gun and the Renetti, and the reason why i don't know if it's the number one option is it does have the fastest time to kill you saw from the stats earlier it does have that crazy you know ttk difference but the thing is, is i do think this gun's a little bit harder to shoot than your typical smg and the reason why is that it has the conversion kit on it and the way the conversion kit is is when you shoot it once it shoots and then when you let go of the trigger it also shoots so every time you hold the trigger one shot and then you let go another shot so if you tap the trigger like this it could shoot really fast where it feels almost automatic. But the thing is, is when you're constantly pulling the trigger like that, it's kind of hard to control your aim sometimes. So that's why I think this gun is not bad, but it definitely can be weird to transfer on the people and to snap on people and obviously hit your shots. And at the end of the day, no matter how fast the gun kills, 
If you cannot control your shots or hit your shots or feel comfortable while shooting the gun, it will not kill fast enough because bullets that aren't hitting the target are not going to count for the time to kill, obviously. So I like this gun a lot, and I do use this gun, and I'm not sure if this is my number one meta right now, if I was playing ranked or not. We're going to have to kind of wait and see, or maybe it's something where I'm just not fully used to it yet, and the more I use it, the better I'll get at it. Obviously, the more you practice, the better you get with stuff, so maybe I'm just not fully comfortable with it. I would love to hear in the comments below of what you guys think of this gun. But right now, this is the fastest time to kill that you can kind of use for the most part. 100% either number one or two. I'm not too sure where I'd put this. The strikers are really close. Number three, the striker nine. But those are the statistical best metas right now, I would say. But we have a lot of other guns to show you guys real quick too. And one of them actually might even be within the statistical best meta too. But I'm gonna consider it an off meta weapon for a couple reasons. And we'll get into that right now. First off meta gun that's definitely not statistically in the meta with the HRM and some of the other guns that melt. But it's a gun that I have a lot of fun using. I've used it on stream a bunch. If you guys don't watch me live, I definitely recommend watching me live on stream when I'm testing out some of these weapons as well. And I'm not always about using the super sweaty there's like metal weapons as much as i'm also just using some other fun guns and testing some other guns out and i understand that not every gun has to be within the meta to obviously use and have fun and there are a lot of people that watch my stream that also just talk about using off meta guns and seeing how it looks in the hands of someone that plays call of duty a lot so my number one here is we made a short form on this video. It's definitely a really fun gun. I've seen it on Rebirth a little bit already. That's actually kind of played against me, but I used it a bit the other day too, and I was having a lot of fun on stream with it. Now in the short form video, we had the glassless optic knot on it and the stockless mod on this. I am not going to recommend that fully the more I've used it just because I don't think a lot of the people that watch this video are playing Call of Duty 10 hours a day. And I think this one is probably the most advantageous when you're using this gun just for the speed and like the kind of gives you like the speed and the movement and the camera ability to obviously break cameras and get those first couple shots off. But it does have a little bit of weird recoil. So I've been using the Jack Glassless Optic instead with all these attachments and it just shoots pretty straight. It's pretty fun to use and just overall uh, a very usable gun where if you want to just use something fun that's satisfying. Personally, I'm an MP5 lover. I love the MP5, so, you know, when I get to use this gun and have some fun with it, I'm going to take my chances. And they also just buffed it too, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a reason where hopefully, you know, they keep giving this gun some love. I don't want this to be the number one meta again, but again, if this is just usable, it will always make me happy. So this is a personal preference thing that has loved this gun in general, but those are the attachments I would recommend right now to try it out and just have some fun for an off meta. You're not going to be using this and just being cracked out like an HRM9, but just something to kind of change up the vibe. And this is an honorable mention for me just because I enjoy this gun a lot, and especially for Rebirth. I feel like you can get away with using a lot of different guns now lately. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But now let's talk about something that's weirdly off meta, but it is statistically one of the fastest killing guns right now. And here you can see the MCW statistically kills just as fast as that core 45. It's right there. It's very, very, very good. If your bullets are hitting people, they will be dropping. Now, the difference between this gun is you can see if you click the sprint to fire speed in, the sprint to fire speed on this gun is not very good. You can even see here it's at 133, which compared to some of the subs is a little bit high. And when you're trying to run around on rebirth and get cracked, that sprint to fire speed can definitely bail you out sometimes when it's especially at you know 100 to 33 that's 33 milliseconds where you can start shooting before the other person can depending on how you're moving and playing obviously but when you're using this weapon you can see that this is more of like a sniper support thing i would say uh i like these attachments on this gun specifically because again it still kind of feels mo like mobile you can still move around a little bit like i don't feel like super slow or laggy with this gun but it's not going to be considered meta in my opinion just because again that sprint to fire speed it's not super super uh straight shooting like the hrm9 would be and obviously there's some other guns that just kill fast enough that you're still moving so i think again personal preference wise this is a gun that i would use as an off meta to have some fun with but i wouldn't recommend this to play at iridescent rank at the highest level unless you're super super skilled but this is something you can try out and have a lot of fun with and maybe this is something that fits your play style the most i'm not too sure but this is something to take note for because this gun is very very good it statistically 100% has that time to kill. And of course, you can obviously just change it up if you're getting stale of using the HRM9 because that has been around for a while. So the MCW with the conversion kit, nothing to sleep on. Here are your attachments again. The reason why I would recommend the Sonic Suppressor on this over anything else is that bullet velocity without the Sonic Suppressor is 480. And honestly, that's kind of low where you can even notice it with a submachine gun sometimes. So personally, I think the suppressor is nice on it. But even if you don't like that and you throw on the Zem Compensated Flash Hider, you're going to see that this thing shoots pretty straight. Definitely not going to be that hard to control. It's just going to be kind of tough at the even longer ranges. Sometimes even like 15 to 20 meters, you can kind of notice it. But regardless, those are the attachments you can run on this gun. Definitely a fun one to use. And now let's talk about another one. And that is going to be an LMG 
which is the Holger 26. Now, this is a weird one. I recommend building it like this, the conversion kit with the tactical grip, the stock, the Razor Hawk laser, and the Bastion angled grip. And the reason why is because I think this gun is impossible to control outside of like the five to six meter range. And with that being said, it's not very controllable. I think the best way to control a gun with a lot of recoil is going to be a tactical stance version build of this. And you can see with the stats here that this gun has a crazy time to kill up to six meters, which is really close. So basically your staircase fights and that's about it. It does keep up at the 15 meter range and with tack stance that can get a little bit crazy. But hear me out on this. If you're using this gun, again, this is definitely not a meta gun, no matter what the TTK is. I wouldn't say this is 100% meta, but something to run around in pub and have some fun with and also still be able to kill people like i was saying with these off meta weapons that i'm giving you there's still something a little bit different and the tactical stance on this is not bad you can see like right now a this gun looks really cool with the flame on the, obviously the gun but that is a 20 meter fight that's pretty far when it comes to rebirth island even for your smgs most likely you'll have your ar out so if you're definitely fighting someone with this the tack stance is pretty accurate but like nothing too crazy and of course, within the 15 meter range, whereas that the threshold is still pretty good, you can definitely, uh, you know, drop some people. So this is something you can use and have some fun with. I wouldn't recommend this being like your number one ranked meta. Maybe it is for you, but either way, very fun gun, definitely usable. And just overall, another option that you can use that's not just your super sweaty metas, which is why I wanted to add it to this video too, just to give you some more options. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. We're going to wrap it up there. This is my number one HRM right now that I've been using. I'm sure it will change and I'm probably going to try some other builds. That's why I recommend watching me live when you guys can. So we can obviously always cook up some builds together. If you ever have anything, make sure you're dropping some comments or obviously comments in the stream too. Either way, I hope you guys have a good one. And I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you guys drop a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.